You're good. Good evening, everyone. Hello, my name is Matt McLean. Really happy to be with you tonight to talk about how everyone can compose using Note Flight. Uh, I'm, I'm doing that from the perspective of uh, I'm a director of a nonprofit educational um, organization called Young Composers and Improvisers Workshop. And I'm also a full time teacher at the Little Red Schoolhouse and Elizabeth Irwin High School in New York City. Uh, and just before we get started, just note that any of the information I'm going over tonight as far as links and, and other information pertinent to tonight's session, it'll be emailed out to you on the next day or so. So don't feel like you need to write down every link or URL that I visit. That information will come to you. So I just want to quickly go over the agenda for tonight. I'm going to talk about um, our program a little bit and the history of YCIW. And then I'm going to share sort of briefly, um, but really it's important to take a look at how our curriculum is progressive and how we use it to help all of our students compose. Uh, we're going to look at our platform for teachers, which we call YCIW Classroom. And um, we have a number of resources for teachers that are free that you can access at any time. I'm going to go over those with you as well. So who are we? Young Composers and Improvisers Workshop. Uh, we're a community of teachers, composers, musicians, and we're all dedicated towards helping teachers uh, bring composition to the, to the classroom. I started this work uh, in 2010 in my own school, sort of as a curriculum project. And it was really a way for me to find uh, a curriculum that helped all my students create original music. Um, and sort of more importantly, I wanted my kids to have ownership over how music works so that they could use it creatively. Um, it started around 2010, and as we grew, uh, we did uh, form a 501c3 official nonprofit so that we can offer this program to other teachers. And our mission, in addition to supporting music teachers, uh, is to provide everything you're going to see here tonight. Uh, we provide it free for the New York City public schools. And then we have uh, schools all around the, the country uh, taking part in the program as well. So here are just a little bit about the numbers since 2010. Uh, a component to our program is having each student's piece performed, and that's sort of an optional um, part of the program. For schools nearby, we hold concerts at the school for the students and the community. Uh, each year we have a remote concert featuring pieces from the satellite schools throughout the country, and we've had uh, over 800 pieces to this point performed. Uh, just real quick, I just want to demonstrate a little bit. Um, this is a middle schooler's piece that was composed using one of our main courses called Music Works One, which we're going to take a look at in a moment. But I just want to stress that we really empower kids to be composers, to really create music to, that to them sounds uh, really engaging. Uh, here's just a snippet of a piece by middle school in New Hampshire performed by the artists that we have in residence Metropolis Ensemble. Okay, so they're just uh, a piece that I just wanted you to hear by middle schooler in New Hampshire. And my apologies, I, I know you didn't get to see the beginning of that. And I just wanted to throw up the, the stats on our organization again that I mentioned a moment ago. Um, so this is the work we've been doing, like I said, started from my own teaching, which I, I still do to this day, and now we've grown into a full-fledged nonprofit. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at our website to hear every composition. They're all recorded. You can, um, in many cases, watch the live video performance, but they are also, you can hear all the audio recordings as well. Um, our main sort of piece, which I'll get to in a moment, is YCIW Classroom. This is um, our platform that is integrated with Note Flight. 
Um, I'm going to go through it in detail, but it has web lessons, a number of pre-made note flight assignments. Uh, we have a re really innovative um, use of web instruments. It comes with a grade book. Uh, part of YCW Classroom does include uh, composer mentoring or giving feedback to students as they work on their compositions. And then as I mentioned a moment ago, there's a live performance that is optional. Um, so this idea of a progressive curriculum, um, we, we sort of um, use this phrase sound before theory when we describe how the, the curriculum works. And a question we ask ourselves is we've, we've gone through and, and built each piece of the curriculum and as we update it is we're always seeking uh, to find a way if there's a, kid, a way for the kids to mess around with the concept before having to define it. Um, you know, much different than sort of learning a bunch of music theory and then trying to be creative after you've learned all these things about music theory. We want kids to use the concepts um, creatively and then through doing that they are learning about how music works as they make a piece, just like in art class, right? Um, and a big piece of that is technology. How can we use technology to help kids play with the concepts? And, and we do include traditional instruments in that. So aside from iPads and computers, um, we, we have kids using traditional instruments and their voice as well. So it is um, composition for everyone. We, we, we really work hard to make sure that the concepts are open-ended so that every learner has an inroad to beginning a piece, right? We know that in a class of 20 or 30 kids, everyone has a different experience with music and different um, sort of backgrounds with how much knowledge they already have. And we have set it up so that a kid can start in their piece, access the concepts right from where they are. So, you know, you might have kids who don't read notation at all, and they are also able to begin their piece along with a student who maybe has been taking piano lessons or violin, they read notation. Um, another way to kind of think about it is we are doing this together as a class. So the curriculum is really set up for classroom teachers. So kids could be working collaboratively on these concepts, but then they're going into note flight and they're working on their piece individually. And then we feel a really com important component is having the, the music live in the real world. So hopefully getting a live performance and we work really hard to have teachers um, have an option for their students to get their pieces played. So what does it look like? And I really want to highlight two things. It can look one of two ways. Uh, it can be sort of like a blended learning experience, which is how I teach it at my school. And this is where kids are sort of working on the concepts collaboratively in groups using instruments, technology, and then they're going to YCW Classroom, which you'll see in a second, and they're using the lessons, they're using note flight and working on an individual piece. However, we have many teachers who are just teaching their music class using the program in sort of a computer lab setting, where they're just working in YCW Classroom, they're doing the lessons and working on note flight strictly sort of just on their own. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't mean that it can't be experiential. So when a kid is working on a computer, um, we think that these web instruments are sort of groundbreaking in giving a kid uh, an instrument to play. So without having to study piano for 10 years or, or five years or whatever it is, they can now use their keyboard. Here's an example I'd like to share with you quickly. Uh, here you'll see a choir team, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. The student is playing it, chords and the melody, like a piano, and the notes are going directly into note flight with their transcribed function. So aside from inputting notes into note flight, they can just play these web instruments as they would uh, a piano as a really important tool in the com compositional process. Uh, so first, I'd like to just take a look at, at some of the free resources for teachers that you can go to. And, and my hope is that in me talking about the curriculum, you'll just get some ideas uh, in your own practice that you maybe want to incorporate. Um, but we have a resource for you. We call it Music Works One for Teachers. And we set this up for teachers to go through all of the pedagogy that we use um, for students to create their first piece in note flight. It's broken up um, into melody and harmony and form. I'm going to get into that in a minute with YCW Classroom, but you can go through this as a teacher <clears throat> and learn about the, the, the pedagogy, decide how you want to use it with your kids, and then throughout, the, throughout this site, there are links to note flight template scores that you can download and upload into your own uh, note flight account and use those with your kids, all for free. Uh, and then we have a really robust teacher community forum where you can post questions about trying to help kids compose for the first time using the curriculum. Um, it's, it's heavily subscribed to. It's a great place to bounce ideas off of teachers, hear about best practices, and, and really um, try some things out in your own class. So again, these links we'll, we'll send out to you in an email in a day or two. 
Um, but I'd like to just turn to YCWU classroom and kind of go over the curriculum with you. I'm going to walk you through it, but really what it is, it's a way for us to, for me to share with you the, the philosophy and the pedagogy so you can um, sort of learn from this. And I would hope that, you know, feel free to steal as much of this. If you don't sort of sign up to use YCWU classroom, we really want um, to promote teachers taking this initiative with kids uh, because we, we've seen in our own work how important a tool like NoFlight can be and we think this is a, a really important way to unlock some of this creativity for kids. Okay, so if you sign up with us, a teacher would have a login and right now YCW Classroom has two main courses, Music Works 1, Music Works 2. Uh, they take you from beginning to end of a complete composition with a student. We have a supplemental course called Consonance and Dissonance and this is uh, just sort of exploring some of those ideas in, in further depth. Uh, we're going to take a look at Music Works 1 and I just kind of want to scan briefly the sort of nature of the assignment. So we're going to look at some of the web lessons in a moment that are interactive. But you can see here the assignments uh, with Note Flight. Um, and then there's some sort of quick ch um, quizzes to sort of check students' learning as you go along. But it, it starts with melody. Uh, we found that that's a, a, a safe, subjective way for kids to begin their pieces. You know, we, we, we ask our students to think about ways they might want to begin their piece, and they can choose any number, but we suggest starting with the main melody is, is a good way to go. It gives them a nice foundation moving forward, and they can build on it. Um, we'll get into that in a second, but the first piece covers form. Uh, and then we have a really progressive, innovative way that we help kids explore harmony, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then we get into orchestration. We find that kids can relate to this. This is another one of those open-ended um, concepts, orchestration, texture, how can we put instruments together um, with kids with varying backgrounds can use that concept creatively and we'll talk about that. And it takes them all the way through performance practice. So what do they need to tell the musicians uh, when, when you're a composer, all these things, dynamics, articulations, etc. cetera. Uh, as students work, uh, teachers can make give five assignments where they will receive a, a composer mentoring from one of our composer mentors. So right on the student's score, they'll get some feedback about their piece. Kids can ask questions. Um, it's really a, a big motivator for kids and it also gives them valuable insight. Along those lines, we also, if you're part of YCW Classroom, you can schedule a live classroom session uh, with a composer to, to Skype into your class and answer questions <clears throat> from your students and they'll go over the student's work as well. So I want to jump into one of the first assignments, which is this idea of starting with a melody. And the way we do it with kids is we want them to build a melody that's memorable. And we, we go over with them, we talk to them about how a melody can be memorable and that there's a real sort of scientific mathematical way that we can make a melody that's memorable and it gets to this idea of melodic shape. So in Kids can go through the lesson. Yeah, first composition. All the lessons have not, uh, narrations. I'm going to mute that for a moment, but there are narrations with every lesson, so kids are sort of clicking through these. You can use them as a teaching tool, or the kids can do them one-on-one. -on -one. And we start with this idea of melodic shape, and that to build a melody that is memorable, it's going to have a smooth melodic shape. We, we sort of enter into this idea of melodic shape and putting notes together by using the musical alphabet. So this is a way for every kid to start a composition right away. And so we sort of take a, a one liberty with Western harmony in that there's, we don't differentiate between half steps and whole steps. So all the letters of the musical alphabet, one, one to next, is a step. So what we first ask kids to do is to figure out uh, a melody that uses mostly steps. And you could imagine a number of sort of instruments to do this on piano, orf instruments, a band instrument, etc. But kids right in the browser can use our QWERTY instrument and play melodies. So uh, they can come up with their melody, experiment by seeing the letters in the musical alphabet. So right now I'm just playing this on my, on my computer keyboard and it is mapped to the musical alphabet. Um, you'll notice also that every lesson connects to a, the teacher guidebook, the teacher resources, and this is going to help teachers learn about best practices. Um, it has class activity examples. We can take a look at this. So as you're going through the curriculum as a teacher, we've laid out some ideas to help you with your students um, 
we found some things that really work and we put them here to sort of help uh, help you negotiate these these um, this part of the pedagogy with your kids so there are some classroom activities that you can try if you're doing more of a blended approach as I mentioned earlier um, also on every assignment is a link to the teacher discussion forum so you can learn about uh, what other teachers have found to be helpful uh, you might have a breakthrough and you might want to share that with the community of teachers and you would um, you could come directly from each uh, lesson to see what teachers are saying about it. We really want to promote community. We think that um, you know we're going to learn more together. We're going to sort of find out best practices and when we share them we're sort of going to help all of our students a little more efficiently. Um, so I want to move on to uh, how we connect the musical alphabet to the staff. We want to do that quickly and this is where we start to engage in node flight. So where we use the musical alphabet to talk about steps, right? We can also talk about leaps, where we would leap over a letter of the musical alphabet, and we can talk about skips being um, leaping over more than one letter of the musical alphabet. Well, we can make the connection between the lines and spaces of the staff with the musical alphabet, and we do that early on so kids can see, oh, a line to a step, okay, that's gonna, or sorry, a line to a space, that's going to be a step, etc. And then we have some uh, preliminary pre-made no-flight activities that will uh, help kids explore this. And to do that, I'm just going to switch over quickly to uh, my student view, just to give you a sense of what it looks like for the students and how they're going to complete their work in no-flight, and, so, um, and how they're going to submit it to you so you can see it as the teacher. All right, so now I'm in my student view, and I'm going to go to this assignment where to what we have found, because NoteFlight is sort of laid out in such an efficient way, the, the user interface is very intuitive, we don't spend really any time teaching NoteFlight. Um, kids naturally sort of are able to experiment and understand how to use things right away, and we have a few initial assignments to help them. So this one is just a bunch of middle C's laid out, and we ask them to move the notes up or down by step so that we can have a melody that moves all by step. Um, so they can do it with their mouse, they can do it, sorry, they can do it with the uh, arrow keys. And they're going to go through and build a melody that moves all by step. And now here's one of the sort of powerful aspects of YCW Classroom and using it with Note Flight, and that is the student can turn the assignment in. So every assignment is going to have this turn in button. Once they turn it in, that's going to send it um, to your teacher dashboard. I'm going to switch back so you can see how this is working from the teacher side. And take a look at the teacher side of this. And we have something called the speed grader. Um, it's going to collect all of your student submissions in one place. It's going to load up for us. So. I'm right now in the test student accounts, so I just have a couple of students here. But you would see your entire roster all in one place. Uh, this is where you would give feedback, you give written comments, um, and then we have every assignment comes with a built-in rubric, and you can use this to do some very quick grading. So the rubric is set up to award the points based on certain criteria. When you save the score, it adds the grade to the grade book. And we have a certain threshold set so that if a student scores, say, uh, we have most of them set to below 96, that will send the student back to this step and they'll have to do it again and resubmit it. And we find this is a really helpful way to, so kids know, okay, they're getting it, they're okay to move on, or they're not, and they need to re, um, repeat an assignment. Um, and of course, this is all going to a grade book where you would see, again, all of your students, and you can access all the assignments as well. Uh, right from the grade book. And same thing, leaving comments and accessing the rubrics. All right, so we have these preliminary exercises, and we want to get the kids as soon as possible into making their piece. We have a few other lessons about uh, this idea of key that help kids understand how we're going to start all in C major. We start our pieces in C. If there's a kid who's more experienced and they want to write a different key, great. Um, there's, like I said, this open-endedness to the concepts where they can change the keys if they want. Um, but we talk about the home note, this idea of C being the home note when there are no sharps and flats, etc. 
Uh, but then we get them into beginning their composition. And I'm going to switch back to my student view for this and take you through these steps of how a kid is going to build their composition and explain uh, the, the pedagogy. So they've had some initial experience with note flight. They are grappling with this concept of smooth melodic shape, the idea of key. And then we ask them to begin a piece by creating a main melody. Um, we use a storytelling metaphor a lot in the curriculum. So what they're doing is creating their main character. And this main character, this main melody, it's going to be seen throughout their, their composition. So it has to be something they really like. And it has to be a manageable length, right? This idea that if it's, if it's memorable, it's probably not too long. Um, I'm going to access Note Flight's version feature here as I made a few of these uh, earlier today to show you. So as you know, with Note Flight, you can access any student's <clears throat> earlier version of a saved score, which is great to see how they progressed uh, on their music. So we would ask them to create something like this, a two or four measure main melody. Um, you can see here, the one I made is mostly uses mostly stepwise motion. Um, I'm getting some strange errors just because I have this score opened in many tabs. You can sort of ignore those. Um, okay. So the important thing to see here is it's, I created a melody. I didn't talk about rhythm at all in the curriculum so far. We, we have kids, um, be, the guide be that this, mem this melody has to be singable. So this will sort of limit their, lim their rhythms, but that is, um, you know, it's up to the composer. Um, one of the, the ideas behind having every student's piece performed is that is also going to dictate some of the rhythms, right? It's great to hear it on note flight, but there are certain things the composer has to take into account when they are writing for a human being, right? When they're writing for a real instrument. Okay, so once we have our main melody, the, the curriculum talks about, well, how do we make our music longer? Um, we have a number of lessons about developing a melody. How do we do that? And we get into the, the sort of three kinds of repetition, just repeating something exactly, uh, a variation. What if you repeat it and change it a little bit? Uh, and the idea of sequences. Kids really gravitate towards sequences, <laughs> which is a really powerful way to develop your music. But right away, we want to develop our main, main melody. And I chose here to use a sequence. So we see uh, the first four measures of the main melody. And then I've repeated it by just changing the end a little bit. Um, I might try to play it for you just so you can get a sense. I'm going to go on for a second. Okay, so we have a main melody. We repeated it with some kind of change. The curriculum then goes into uh, form. Uh, we have found that one of the things that's most helpful for kids is to build out uh, the form of their piece with just one instrument. Um, so we get into ABA form, uh, and we, the curriculum talks about creating a new section. And for it to sound new, it has to be different. Something about that section has to be has to sound different to the listener. So maybe a completely different rhythm. Um, we use colors. So here you can see we have the kids color their A section blue, and then we have their um, have them color their B section another color, like green, as you see here. And this helps them sort of keep track of their sections, but also tells us, tells the teacher, uh, kind of what they're thinking. So he, here we see the B section has a totally different rhythm, uh, a lot of triplets, etc. cetera. Uh, and then we're going to put our piece into ABA form. So they just copy and paste and paste the A section at the end. We really promote kids using the copy and paste feature in Node Flight. The R key is the repeat tool, which is really helpful if you just want to repeat note or some measures. We use that a lot with kids. So they made their main melody. They developed it. They created a new melody, which we're going to call our B section. And then they copy and pasted their A section after it so they have an A, B, A form. This gets the piece <clears throat> to start to take shape for them. Okay, now when we start talking about harmony, I'm going to jump back to the teacher course for a moment. I just want you to see um, how we lay this out for kids. This this um, is probably the toughest part in helping students write for more than one instrument, right? They have a melody, and that's totally manageable. Most most students really 
can negotiate that without too much difficulty. Um, what we find though is, you know, we want to write for more than one instrument. We also want to have harmony parts. Um, so I'm going to show you one of the lessons on harmony and talk about that a little bit. Okay, one second. Okay, one second. As I, I loaded all of these, so we didn't have to do this. Um, one second. Okay. I'm just going to open a fresh one to that. Okay, here we go. Um, we call it putting notes together, right? And we start talking about harmony in the broadest sense <clears throat> that. You know, the idea of what notes are consonant and what, what are dissonant has always been changing. Um, and that what I, two notes that I think sound good together are consonant, maybe you think are dissonant, that kind of idea. And we talk about how throughout, you know, human history, consonants and dissonance has been evolving. But we do start from a subjective place. We, we really feel strongly that kids need to sort of have a reference as to what's consonant and what's dissonant. So we've come up with this idea that letters that are a step apart in the musical alphabet we're going to call a dissonance and letters that are a skip apart we're going to call a consonance and this sort of helps us manage um, how we're going to put two instruments together so we can control consonants and dissonance so this so we're first just talking about you know the idea of melody versus harmony of course sounds happening together and we, we you know again as I mentioned this idea of consonants and dissonance and using the musical alphabet, we take the kids through what, you know, two letters in the musical alphabet sound together are dissonant. Um, the lessons will have these drag and drop exercises where kids are matching up consonant intervals and dissonant intervals um, and working through sort of the concept in that way. Obviously, an instrument like the Quartzian is perfect for this because kids have the musical alphabet laid out. So there are a number of activities where kids are playing consonants and distance intervals right on Aquarian, right on their computer keyboard. Um, once they do that, once they can kind of explore this idea of steps being dissonant, skips being consonant, they can then go into note flight and add another instrument. Let's switch back to my example composition here. And this is, a, again, where coloring the notes becomes really important for kids. We ask them to color the consonant intervals blue and the dissonant intervals red. You can see I've done that. Um, I added a clarinet part in the bottom to this violin. Again, kids are choosing instruments that they want to play at their piece, obviously. Um, and so I just want to point out, right in this first measure, so we have E and the G as a skip, right? So that would be consonant. And then the violin part moves to an F because it's an eighth note. We could consider it a dissonant passing note with that G in the clarinet. The note there by mistake. Um, so we would have the kids color that red, and then it resolves to a G with an E in the clarinet. Um, and a powerful learning tool for kids is to say to them, as you color your notes, try not to have two red notes in a row. Um, this is going to help our, our dissonances resolve the consonances and create some voice leading. So when they add the second instrument, that's probably one of the primary concerns, trying to control their, con their dissonances. Um, but we also have talked about texture in the curriculum at this point. So if they're adding a second part, maybe it has to sound like a background part. How do we do that? The idea of re repetitive rhythms um, and maybe some space with rest. Um, I want to point out these purple notes because if you're thinking about the musical alphabet, you can also have skips. And we treat the skips as a not quite a dissonance because it's that open sound, but that we want to also resolve those to thirds, to skips. So we're going to color our skips purple. So here this D in the clarinet uh, with the G in the violin is a skip, but it resolves up to an E with a G that makes a skip, etc. Again, no, not having two purple notes in a row. And when we're adding a second part, again, getting back to texture, if it's repetitive, for a background part, it's going to sound like a background part. So here you can see in this clarinet part has a repetitive rhythm. This is something kids will understand and it will make, um, it'll give them some choices when they're orchestrating their, their instruments that make sense. 
again, coloring everything and working out the consonances and dissonances using the colors. We repeat the A section. Again, the background part could be slightly altered. I move the melody up an octave. These are all things in no flight that can happen really quickly with just highlighting notes um, and using some of the tools for transposition. And then sort of lastly, uh, on this example piece, I just want to demonstrate how we would get to a third instrument. Um, and that's very easy, actually. You Again, you might have students who are really understanding this concept of consonants and dissonance and are wanting to sort of create a brand new third part that supports their part, and that might be great. Um, the curriculum allows for kids to have other suggestions uh, to get their part, their piece up to three instruments. I simply just copied the clarinet part, pasted it into the cello, and moved it up a skip, which is going to create consonants with the other with the other background part. And then checking with the main melody, you can sort of make some adjust adjustments. But in most cases, that will create two instruments to support the main melody. Um, it's a great tool and a, and a trick that kids like to use as a starting point. Uh, also notice when we do with bass clef, that might not be a, a clef familiar to many kids. So for bass clef instruments like the cello, we're going to use the treble clef that transposes um, the octave. So always trying to stay in a, in a, a clef that's easier for kids as they're negotiating these, these concepts and being creative. Um, from there, we talk about how to end a composition, what makes a convincing ending. Um, and then those performance practice ideas I mentioned as far as dynamics, articulations, all these things that are, are the job of the composer. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little insight into how Music Works 1 starts to kind of help maybe trigger some ideas in your own teaching about how we can get kids composing really with no experience. Um, and then through doing this, of course, the goal is that they have some ownership over these concepts and they can create music uh, in other contexts. Um, I want to go back to just a, a closing slide here um, to point out a couple of things and then we will take some questions. So we have set up for teachers a demo version of YCIW Classroom, which you can go to anytime. This will always be available for you to explore as a teacher. You can go through Music Works 1, and I encourage you to look at Music Works 2, which we're really excited about. Music Works 2 begins with students creating chord progressions, creating harmonies, and then learning how to build melodies that fit chord progressions. Um, so I encourage you to check out Music Works too, but you can log in. Here's our URL, our URL class.ycaw.net, and log in with the credentials teacher, teacher, and you can log into our demo site, go through all the curriculum ideas, um, and check it out for yourself. So on that note, um, thank you very much for listening so far. I, I've, I've talked down here for about 30 minutes, so I'm going to pause and see if there's some questions that we can go to. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so great. Question about it being based on Canvas. Yes, so Canvas is open sourced, so we host our own version, and it's edited um, heavily so that it suits some things with Note Flight to work a little better uh, with our web lessons, so that's a little more functional for kids. Um, but if you have experience using Canvas, this will make a lot of sense to you. Many of the functionality is the same, but we've added some different features as well, as I mentioned, because it's our own uh, <clears throat> version of, of Canvas. Uh, the question is, do you have to teach an NYC to use the program? Great, great question. Uh, no, you do not is the answer. So we have this available for teachers anywhere in the world. Uh, we have teachers uh, all around the country using the program. They sign up, uh, they enroll, uh, and they get access to everything that YCW Classroom has that I showed you. So all the web lessons, the use of the note flight assignments, and the composer mentoring. The one component that is separate is we aren't there to provide a live performance of the student's piece. Um, what we are working on is finding real ways for kids or for teachers to have every student's piece played. And right now, we can offer two things. And there are more details about this on our website. We will definitely hold a, a concert in the spring featuring as many pieces that we can as possible. Um, we are a nonprofit, and we just fundraise to try to find ways to do that. Uh, we also have a partnership with the $99 Orchestra in Lisbon, 
Portugal, uh, and they will perform our students' pieces or your students' pieces uh, for $16, and you'll get a recording uh, of six instruments. So those are some options. Again, it's separate. We know we a lot of, a lot of our teachers want to just use the curriculum, get their kids composing, um, but we do know that it's really powerful if you can say to your kids, oh, you know, you can have a, a real performance of your piece. Uh, here's a question from Michelle. Um, I've never used a query team before. Is that a feature that comes with your program? Yes, it comes. A query team comes with the program. It's built into the courses, so it's at certain steps kids are using a query team. Um, it'll work in any Chrome browser. Uh, it is um, available elsewhere. So it's created by a wonderful group of designers at NYU. If you visit aquertian.com, you can just log on and, and anyone can use it. It's absolutely free. Uh, we have made some customizations to it, though, that tailor to the curriculum. So when kids open Aquertian in our courses, that everything's in C. Uh, there aren't any other sort of features that Aquertian has that are sort of a, we found to be a distraction for kids. It just lets them sort of play the musical alphabet. So just be aware of that. But yeah, visit aquertian.com and, and anyone can play it. Great question. Okay, here's a question from Shannon. Do you have to add the LMS feature to the note flight to use the system? Um, what I think you're asking is, uh, do you have to add anything to your note flight account? Maybe I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. I cannot. I could say this: um, when you sign up for YCW Classroom, this allows your students to use note flight with our curriculum. So when you log into it, you see their note flight assignments. They see the note flight work that they need to do. Uh, they're working on their composition. If you want to do other really awesome things that note flight offers, you should just sign up for a regular note flight learn account, and um, you will be, you know, you have your own note flight account that you would use with your students that's set up at your school. Uh, now is probably a good time to mention we do we do want to make this extra available for uh, subscribers to NoteFlight Learn. So if you are a NoteFlight Learn account uh, holder, you will get in your confirmation email uh, a discount code to sign up uh, at a 60% discount for YSW Classroom. So look for that. Um, all right, great questions. Again, you see my email here. Feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, it's matt at ycw.net, and yeah, I'm happy to answer any other questions as you think of them. Uh, but we're really passionate about the work, um, and we really want to grow the community. So if you're a teacher remotely interested in this, we're happy to talk you through it. So Shannon had asked, you know, how much does it cost? Right now, for for average teachers who aren't No Flight Learn members, it's five dollars per student. Um, but as I mentioned, if you're a NoteFlight Learn subscriber, that's 60% off. Um, and if you're a New York City public school teacher, it's free. Um, but we will, we're really trying to grow uh, our teacher user base, so work with, uh, we're definitely willing to work with you. So um, shoot me an email and uh, we can find a solution to get you started. Great. So I've Really enjoyed going through this with you. Uh, we'll stay on for a little longer. If you have other questions, <clears throat> I'm happy to. If you want to take the time, we could go through some Music Works two things. Um, I really do encourage you to go to ysw.net and listen to the pieces. Um, as you know, as music teachers, our kids are really um, capable of outstanding creative things. Um, students of all levels. And uh, really, it's through using NoteFlight uh, that we've been able to create this experience for kids. So I, I do encourage you to, to check out the, the recordings. OK, yeah, so Michelle, you see my email there, matt at ycw.net. Um, great. And, and I do, like I, I'm showing you here, definitely Check it out for yourself, class.ycw.net, and log in as teacher. Teacher, um, uh, be sure you're using Chrome. Should have mentioned that again, but we we are um, all of our features will work perfectly with Chrome. They're updated for Chrome. If you're on something else and you're finding it not it's not working, you certainly need to to use Chrome. 
So I think I'll zip over to, we have a little bit of time, I can zip over to Music Works 2 and see if we can take a look at that. If you think of other questions, I will keep the question uh, panel open. So if you think of something, feel free to shoot me a question, even if you're trying out YCW Classroom. Um, you can shoot me a question here and I'll stay on for at least for another 15, 20 minutes. So jumping back over to MusicWorks 2, um, like I mentioned, we're going to start with uh, building chord progressions. And this is, um, we, we, we are sort of style agnostic. The curriculum doesn't talk about any one style. Yes, we are sort of playing the instrument or playing the pieces with sort of classically natured instruments, chamber ensemble. Um, but we, I found in my own teaching that kids really, um, everyone has a different idea of the kind of style of music that they like. If I were to start to, to use examples of hip hop, that's actually going to, may not appeal to everyone that will turn off some students or if they're, you know, vice versa with, with other styles. What we find is that students are really most interested in hearing what their classmates are doing. So uh, a really powerful part of the program, this is something I meant to highlight actually, is when you're in speed grader and you're pulling up your students' work, it's a perfect medium to share uh, each other's work with the class and to facilitate a discussion about the choices that the, the class is making. Uh, I'm just going to zip over to speed grader and show you that. But I'm not going to do that actually right this second. But sharing each other's work, we find, is when most students have that aha moment. So they hear what Sally did next to them when they're making their, their background part, and that gives them an idea. Um, so rather than bringing in Beethoven or Mozart to exhibit these examples, we can pull the examples out of each other's uh, each, each of the student submissions actually. Uh, that's probably my favorite part of teaching the course is sharing, you know, putting up on a, on a smart board or an overhead projector and showing uh, each other, you know, sharing with the class each other's work. Um, so yeah, all this, this recording, just there was another question about recording of this presentation. It'll be sent out to you in an email, a link to this recording uh, in a day or two, so look for that. Um, so here's Music Works 2, and to show you sort of the, the list of, of lessons, we use a quartian. If kids play piano, um, guitar, other choral instruments, they are obviously free to use those. And they're going to start by building diatonic chords. Um, and we can do that really easily if we've gone through Music Works 1 and we really understand skips to create consonances. We're going to build three note chords by just stacking two, sti two skips on top of a, of a letter. Um, so very quickly, kids can, can make diatonic chords. Obviously, a quartian is perfect for that uh, as it's laid out in a, you know, with one row on top of the next uh, being a diatonic chord. I'm going to load that up maybe and just show you that. Um, so once we do that, we have kids build chord progressions. Uh, there are some examples. We use a, actually a Beatles example, a Bach example here to sort of listen to some chord progressions and this idea that like nearly every style is going to have a harmonic progression um, and then kids can actually learn to play there's a, a lesson where kids will play let it be the verse on a quartian um, etc so giving them some hands-on experience even if they don't have piano skills to play chord progressions uh, with my own students I kind of take this one step further and after they finish their chord progression after they've notated it in notes I'll have them uh, figure out how to play it on the piano so I'm a real big believer in, in this idea that when kids create something, a piece of music, they can use that for skill building. If they're going to create it, they're much more invested, and that will help their motivation uh, to learn it, actually. So it's a great way to build skills. Um, so they're going to play three note chords. They're going to create a chord progression that uses just diatonic chords. And really, we don't have any rules for chord progressions, right? We can find many examples of nearly every combination of diatonic chords. They're going to work. Um, once the kids notate their chord progression, that's sort of the first thing they do in note flight. We use colors again to figure out how to put a melody that fits a chord progression. 
and to start how to make a melody fit one chord. And it's this idea of chord tones and non-chord tones, which they already have a grasp of because they've used chord tones to build their chords. So then again, in note flight, using coloring, um, when they play, put a melody in, a, in, a, in an instrument that goes with a chord, they're going to color their, you guessed it, chord tones blue and their non-chord tones red. Um, and again, we say just don't put two red notes together. If you want to put two red notes in sequence, maybe you need to change your chord. Maybe your melody doesn't go with that harmony. And there's some other things you can think about. But by and large, we want to, if we have a distance, we're going to resolve it. You know, the very simple idea of neighbor tones and leading tones and passing tones. So um, the coloring in NoFly is perfect for that. So they create a chord progression, put their melody to it, um, and then we develop our melody in the same way that we did in MusicWorks 1, those same ideas of development of repetition, variation sequences. Um, we have some lessons on orchestrating a chord progression, which kids love. It's really a lot of fun once they sort of have the palette down of, of their harmonic progression and their melody, they get to decide what kind of rhythms are these chord tones going to play. What are the background parts going to sound like? And again, they can build out their form. They add a melody to a B section, etc. There are some lessons where they there's a discussion piece of the course where they're talking about the composing process. And then those same sort of performance practices after they find an ending, how are they going to add dynamics, articulations, and then some orchestration ideas to get up to six instruments. So. Uh, music Works 2, again, builds off Music Works 1. The kids get the composer mentoring feedback as well in this course. Um, and with my students, we've written full orchestral pieces using Music Works 2 that have been performed by the $99 Orchestra in Lisbon, as I mentioned. Uh, you can check those out on the website. So I'm not seeing any new questions come in. I'm, I'm fine to, to wrap up here. Uh, I'll put up my email just one more time. Uh, just a special thanks to NoteFlight for host uh, for hosting this and inviting us to share. Um, I'm really uh, excited to help any teacher get started with this. Um, please feel free to reach out and um, good luck on the start of your year. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Take care.